Good evening, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church, where we are all about loving God, loving our neighbors, and living with purpose. Welcome to our annual Blue Christmas worship service. Blue Christmas service is an acknowledgement that for some, because of difficulties in life, Christmas is not a time of merry and bright and joyous occasions. And this is our acknowledgement of that, where we come together to uh, share one another's burdens and to feel God's presence uh, in the midst of our sorrows. A couple of announcements. Um, we will be having communion during this worship service. So if, uh, if you don't have some bread or some wine or some water or soda or something like that with you, go, go get some right now. Go get a cracker out of your kitchen and a cup of juice or a piece of bread and some Coca-Cola, whatever, whatever uh, you have, so that you can join us for communion later on in the service. I also want to remind you that we will be having a Christmas Eve worship on Christmas Eve, uh, beginning at 5 o'clock. So you'll be able to, to watch that on our website, uh, and so, so be sure and put that on your calendar as well. Again, welcome to worship. Let us begin. Please join me in the call to worship. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us unite our voices, hearts, and minds as we say the unison prayer. God of love and understanding, we gather here this evening to confront our pain in the midst of the world's celebration. Help us know that you are present with us in all of our moods and feelings and seasons. Grant us a taste of the hope, peace, joy, and love that you promise 
to all of your people through the gift of your son, Jesus. Amen. The first reading tonight is from the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of the past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Our second reading is from Psalm 22, verses 1 through 5. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. Third reading is from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. 
He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forever. We pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, 
our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The fourth scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Let's listen for the word of God. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Blue Christmas is also referred to as the longest night service, a reflection that during this season, the nights are getting longer as the days get shorter, but also a reflection of the struggle, the pain, the sorrow, and the despair that individuals may go through during this time of the year can make time pass so slowly. And that is especially true this year, which has been one of our toughest on record. Each of us comes here this evening with some pain, some hurt, and with a need for healing, and Christmas just may not be all that merry and bright. Some of us have encountered hardship that leaves us wondering, why me? We were just getting along, trying to lead a decent life when suddenly things just fell apart. Why now is also on the minds of some of us. I mean, if things truly happen according to God's plan, then why did this have to happen just now when things were falling into place. It's enough to make one wonder just what the heck is God's plan. In the depth of our sorrow, we might even feel abandoned by God. What we feel is real, and no one can deny that. Yet even though these blue feelings are part of our Christmas, what needs to be an even greater part of our Christmas is the certain promises of our God that we receive this evening. The promise that God knows our hearts and that God is with us. The promise that God's greatest desire is to be with us. We need to be reminded that the cup of life is not just completely filled with sadness and sorrow. There is joy to be found amidst the blues which surround us. The real Christmas is about God who comes to us wearing human skin. God's coming is proof of an amazing love, a love deeper and wider than any human words can truly describe. Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. And tonight, we remember that birth and we remember that we are never alone. Christ was born fulfilling the promise spoken by the prophet Isaiah centuries before when he said, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him. Emmanuel, this miracle, the virgin birth that occurred in Bethlehem happened for one and only one reason, so that God could be with us, 
so that God could be in communion with the people of God. God desires this unity with us and intimacy that comes through a mutual bond between an adoring people and a loving God. It is a relationship not forced. It is a communion freely offered and received. Through the birth of Christ, God goes all the way to make possible this communion. God enters into our world fully human and fully God. God comes to us as an infant in need of our care and nurturing. God comes to us as a teacher searching for students. God comes to us as a healer forgiving and redeeming. God comes to us as a prophet calling for followers. It's a remarkable story, a true miracle. The child who was born became a man who would die. This man, pierced by a soldier's lance, was laid in a tomb and given up to death, yet God was not finished. Darkness would not have the final word. God who desires an ever deepening relationship with us would raise this man from the dead. Death could not keep its grip over God. And as death is conquered, Jesus stands before us, embracing us in mercy and love. He stands before us with a very simple question. The, the same question he asked of his disciples. An invitation to relationship. Do you love me? With eyes full of tender, loving expectation, we are invited again. Do you love me? With arms open wide to receive us, we receive the invitation a third time. Do you love me? This passionate desire of God to enter into this intimate relationship with us forms the core of Christmas and the communion. God's desire is fulfilled through the birth of the Christ child. And God enters into our human life and walks with us. Now, Jesus stands before us once again issuing an invitation. Do you love me? Do you want a relationship? And as we receive communion this evening, that is a resounding yes, Lord. As we gather tonight, we come experiencing different sorrows, different challenges. We come from different directions and different faith traditions. Yet we are united through a common bond, our desire to be in communion with our God. So tonight, you are invited to join in Christ's feast and discover from where your help comes. The table is set. This feast is open to all who seek solace in the presence of our Savior, whose only desire is to be with us. Amen. We light four candles tonight. We light one in remembrance of loved ones who have been lost. One to remember our pain. One, to remember the burden of the season. And one, to remember our faith.
We light this first candle to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember clearly their faces, their voices, their bodies. We embrace and give thanks for the memories that bind them to us in this season of expectation when all creation waits for the light. We light the second candle to remember the pain of loss loss of relationships, loss of trust, loss of jobs, loss of health, loss of faith, the loss of joy. We acknowledge and embrace the pain of the past. O oh God, we offer it to you, asking that into our wounded hearts and open hands, you will place the gift of peace. Shalom. We light this third candle to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember the past weeks, months, and for some of us, years that have been heavy with our burdens. We accept and lay before you, God, the sharpness of memory, the sadness and grief, the hurt and fear, the anger and pain. We accept and lay before you the ways we feel we have fallen short and the times we have spent blaming ourselves and you for all that we have suffered. We accept and lay before you the time we have walked alone in darkness and in knowledge of our own mortality. We light this fourth candle to remember faith, the gift of light, and hope that God offers to us in the stories of Hanukkah and of Christmas, which both also began in abandonment, insecurity, and humbleness, in a time of war, and in a poor stable. We remember that the loving God who kept the light shining in the temple and who came to share this life with us promises us comfort and peace. We who are here have received your petitions to light a candle in memory of a loved one or as a representation of your burdens, griefs, and sorrows. These are things which make Christmas a blue time for many of us. Therefore, on your behalf, we now light a candle naming the individual or burden you share. Dottie Anderson, Robin Anderson, Marilyn Beathen, Eric Benke, Rod Brown, Troy Broxterman, Paul Damron, Carlos Deanda, Joanne Edmonds, 
Ruth Fecto, Don Foster, Donna Foster, Nettie Foster, Berlin Frank, Beverly Friedrich, Bill Funk, Catherine Galbraith, Bill Gukin, Jody Hankamer, Dan Hardin, Jennifer Ho, Jim Hoover, Bob Jacoby, Brody Johnston, Sue Lockett, Tyler Lockett, Barry Mang Magner, Connie Menninger, Al Metz, John Meyer, Ruth Nance, Don Patterson, Dottie Paulson, Frank Paulson, C.J. Richter, Joel Robinson, Isidore Salm, Marjorie Salm, Robert Salm, Eric Schmidt, Bob Schrader, Marjorie Smith, Mary Elizabeth Stratton, Wilma Townsend, Craig Underhill, John Vitello, Dorothy Warner, Neil Warner, Michael Scott Watson, Warren Watson Sr., and Tom. In the center, we light the Christ candle, remembering that Jesus Christ is always the center of our lives. He hears our cries, he knows our hearts, and in the midst of all our thoughts and emotions, he offers us hope and healing. As we light the Christ candle, we remember the names and situations spoken this evening, and which have gone unspoken, but are on our hearts. Especially, we remember those around the world lost from the COVID-19 virus pandemic. Friends, this evening we gather around Christ's table in communion with our Lord Jesus Christ and with one another. We come at God's invitation as people made holy in Christ, always praising God. We come inspired by the birth of the Christ child, bringing light into a darkened world. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. Whoever you are, wherever you are, as you witness this feast, know that Jesus invites all who trust in him to share in this feast which he has prepared. May the God of the Advent miracle be with each one of you. 
all who seek God. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your voices and sing songs of praise to God with words of life on your lips. Sing praises to our God. Let us pray. It is right and good and a joyful thing to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. From the silence before creation, your words spoke all that is into being. You saw the darkness and called forth light, dividing the day from the night and giving each its name and your blessing. We abused your blessing, choosing to control rather than tend, to consume rather than nourish, to turn away from your light and turn darkness into a hiding place, a place of fear and shame. Still, you chose to bless us and redeem us, calling us to restored fellowship through prophets, leaders, and faithful people. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name. Holy are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. From the darkness of a stable, you brought forth the light of the world. He carried your light into every dark corner, calling those kept in darkness to rejoice in your love and exposing those who hid from your truth to the light of your righteous judgment. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ in His sufferings, one with each other in mutual love, and one in ministry to all the world with healing grace, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture tells us, that on the night before he died, Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, whoever comes to me shall never go hungry, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst.
Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. Let us pray. God, from this table, you have fed us with your very presence and have once again reminded us that every part of our life is pierced with your amazing grace. We give thanks for time spent here with loved ones, and we thank you that this table is a reminder of the mutual love we share with you. Accompany us into the world with peace in our hearts and with strength in the days to come. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. Amen.